Hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher's Circus. Today we are going to be watching some replays of a few matches that I did with Kalashnikov once again. So, he's playing the Halo comp, but now I'm playing a bit of a different team. Instead of being in a bad matchup, I'm actually playing the World Domination team, which does really really well in most matchups. So the difference between these two teams is that he has a Chester with a very good amount of dodge and a finale, right? While I have an Abomination with a stun, and a really good stun at that, and also the capability of slamming and just, uh, you know, being a good boy overall. The Abomination is amazing. So yeah, as with most Mark matchups, we're just, it's kind of a mirror match, except for the Abomination and the Chester. So usually who wins is who gets to shoot with the Arbalest, so we're both gonna try and pull the Arbalest and just um, try and counterplay with our next moves because both teams have a way of just putting the Arbalest back in shooting position, so he can go for a Dirk Stab, he gets a crit, that's actually really good for him. He can go for a Dirk Stab and I can go for a Holy Lance, but then he gets to shoot first if that happens. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take advantage of having an Abomination and I'm going to stun his uh, Arbalest. So yeah, I can do something that he can't. I can stun position 3, which is going to be really, really useful uh, playing this World Domination team. Because I just feel a very... wow, he gets it. Yeah, we get a dodge there because he had an 80% chance because we actually went second. So going second helped us today. Uh, if we hadn't gotten that, well, now we would just pass. We would still be in what I think would be a decent position. But this just makes it uh, quite a lot better for me, so to speak. Quite a lot better, in fact. Yeah, I just feel much more comfortable playing the World Domination team because having two stuns just gives you this sort of flexibility that uh, the Halo comp just doesn't have. And it's really, really good against other Mark teams, just like this one. And that's usually what the best teams are, and you want to counter the best teams, right? Yeah, now we can just stun that Crusade, that we have another stun available to us, with relatively good accuracy, 110. So yeah, let's see what we go for. We obviously want to kill that Obelisk. So we are going to shoot her. I was just deciding if like the Manacles to do, could do enough damage. She had 7 HP, I think, and Manacles, because of that 5% protection, actually had a small chance of not doing enough damage, and I did not want that to happen. So I just decided to do that. Right now he just drops Caltrops because he feels like there's really no better move. Of course, that like, pulling my Bounty Hunter would be the biggest mistake, because then I could just drop a, an instant finish him, right? Yeah, here I decide, well, my come hitter is a 50-50 chance of killing, so if I hit that Arbalest first with a stun, it's gonna make her a bit easier to kill with a come hitter, but yeah, she just dies immediately. That feels pretty good for us. It goes for a harvest on two very high bleed protection characters, and only gets one of the bleeds, so not bad. Yeah, now I'm thinking, well, do I Caltrops or do I move forward? And I just decide to drop Caltrops, I'll move forward next round, because the good thing about this team here is when you have two stuns and and a healer in the form of the Arbalest and a way to clear stuns and the Caltrops, you can just control the match in your advantage in a way that uh, things just work out for you essentially. Because this team can be from behind, like you can lose one of your characters early, relatively early of course, but still with the two stuns, you just have a lot of counterplay potential. There's a lot of things you can do. Yeah, I, here I go for Manacles on that chest, which was a 70% chance, so I was very unhappy to see it fail. Uh, basically what he wants to do is he wants to finale my Crusader to actually still have a winning chance. Because if he's able to finale my Crusader, then I will only have one stun remaining while his Crusader is still at relatively good HP. So definitely a good plan by him, I would say. Now he's gonna he's gonna move forward. I'm probably gonna move forward as well. Something uh, of those sorts. I do remember the match, but I, I don't want to spoil exactly what happens because these are gonna be uh, five matches that we did together. 
And this one is actually the longest of them, I think, because we were still getting used to like the matchup, the trinkets, uh, everything, right? Here I just decide to flare away that stun, because considering I have more actions, it's just, uh, it seems like a good thing to do. Can't finale me just yet, so he's gonna have to go for a dirk stab, uh, most likely, yeah. Goes for a dirk stab, and now he can finale next round without much of a problem. And he also cements his position in, uh, in position 1, which means that uh, pulling a character behind him is not going to stop his finale. I see the stunning blow, it's a 60% chance, and I just think, well, am I winning if I just uh, stun this Crusader? And I say to myself, yeah, I'm winning, because if he goes for a finale immediately, I can just uh, use finish him. And if he doesn't go for a finale immediately, I can manacles him, and second time will most likely work. But he decides to just go ahead, drop that finale. Now I'm down a Crusader, that's right, but now I have to finish him to do a lot of damage to his Crusader. Hopefully a lot of damage. 10 to 20, we roll for 13. It's not great, but it's good enough in my opinion. Because the ma the... The Abomination isn't just a stun bot, he can transform and use Rage Slam, he can do whatever he wants. And his Bounty Hunter is just feeling kind of weird right now because, yeah, look at that, 7 damage. <laughs> uh, provided that is a minimum roll, it's still just uh, his Bounty Hunter without an Arbalest or with a stun. It just feels really poor for him. Now we can go for a Slam, we do 14 damage, so that's enough to knock the Crusade at 0, but he actually gets a move resist there. Which I'm not too unhappy about, I'm just a little bit unhappy. Just a little bit, you know. Yeah, now we can do anything we want with the Arbalist, and we're gonna shoot that Bounty Hunter for 21! 21! That is a big number. Not even a, a crit. Just insane. 21 damage, no mark. Kind of brutal what the Arbalist can do, right? I mean, everyone knows that already, but... Jeez. Yeah, right now I'm thinking, well, my most natural move here sounds like detransforming and going for a stun on the Crusader, but I feel like that could just be wasted damage, because I would rather rake here and uh, apply some pressure on the Bounty Hunter again as well. Now what he's obviously going to try and do is pull my Arbalest so my uh, Bounty Hunter cannot use a finish him. So he tries to go for it, it's a 75% chance, you see me highlighting the move resistances, he gets the pull, but obviously we're just gonna move back two positions, and now we get to finish him, and he has no way of preventing it. And once we get to finish him on that Crusader, his Bounty Hunter is at quite low HP, we still have two healing uh, options, which are the uh, the bandages and the absolution from the, Crus uh, from the Abomination, and now the match is pretty much a confirmed win. And if I'm correct, my opponent... Actually, does he surrender just yet? No, he goes on for a bit longer. He really didn't want to win. <laughs> no, no, he really didn't want to lose, I mean. Yeah, he rolls for 13. Here I just spend a little bit thinking, well, do I heal with... Uh, uh, do I heal with the Arbalest and maybe still get a stun this round? Or do I heal with the uh, Abomination and do damage this round? Both seem really good, honestly. Uh, it's, just, it's just a matter of finishing off at this point. I go for a heal, I think. Yeah. There it is. Oh no, the replay gets choppy once I skip ahead a little bit. Oh jeez, I should not have done that. <laughs> Wait, go back. Oh no. Oh, we messed up. I am so sorry. Alright, it's back to normal. Good. So yeah, we just went for an absolution. You know, absolution into Dirk Stamp onto my uh, Abomination didn't do enough damage, and now we just shoot. And yeah, now we would get to finish him, and it's over. So we go to match number two, and he goes first again. Let's be honest here, going first is. Uh, it's good, but. I mean, in this kind of matchup. It's it's gonna help him, but it's not gonna help him that much because I have two stuns, so I have just a lot of ways of making him uh, feel very useless. So he, f he fails a 75% chance over there of just pulling my Arbalest, and I just decide to go for a stun on his Crusader instead, instead of pulling his Arbalest. He just clicks, and now we are gonna go for the pull, I suppose. 
that seems like the most standard play. Other option would be just to stun the Bounty Hunter, but I'd rather stun the Albus. Yeah, now we failed the move, <laughs> the pull chance, so that's only fair. Don't go moving your mouse all over the place, Shep, it's totally fair. And yeah, now he's uh, gonna go for Harvest. That's a crit, that's gonna hurt. Bleed, bleed, 16 damage on that Bounty Hunter. That hurts, that just hurts. And now we go for manacles. I'm like, oh, I want it, but I want to take advantage of last, um, of last round damage. Honestly, that's kind of a mistake. If you can shoot the enemy arbalist with the arbalist and you get a crit, uh, it's just gonna hurt because the enemy arbalist is gonna be forced to heal instead of shooting back. Yeah, now I just have to heal instead of shooting back, and I'm gonna be at low HP. He's gonna be at high HP. Unless... No, Shep, what are you doing? I go for a sniper shot. But that's that's a big mistake, Shep. Why did you do that? And I'm like, but I wanted to get a crit. I've already won match one, please. No. And my Arbos is dead. My Arbos is dead. It's like, okay, we can salvage this. We just need to get a bunch of damage with the finish him. And yeah, we get a crit. Let's go. We get a nice crit here. So that definitely feels very good. And now we still have two stunning characters, so do we still have a winning chance? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Now we're gonna go for a stun on that uh, Crusader. I already have in hindsight knowledge of what's gonna happen. We don't get the stun, I'm like, oh, okay, you know what, screw this. <laughs> I'm out of here. He's gonna finale me in like two rounds, he still has the Arbalos to shoot me. And I'm very, very likely to lose this. Yeah, so we just move on to the next match because I played that bad and, uh, you know, I just wanted to get that over with. So we move on to no match number three. It's 1-1 one, one at this point. So yeah, this match is quite decisive. Quite, quite, quite decisive. If this was, if this was a best of three, whoever won this match would uh, essentially... would essentially win the best of three. This is a very important match. He gets to go first again, goes for the come hitter. Now obviously we're gonna use come hitter as well. Uh, you can see how the moves are starting are starting like to get faster because we've already gotten used to each other's teams. We kind of agreed not to change teams just to run with the exact same thing to uh, kind of just decide who'd win between the Halo comp and the world domination team. Okay, he moves forward with the Dirk stab. Now I actually move forward with the Holy Lands instead of uh, just stunning, so it's a bit of a change in my uh, action order right here. Only because I didn't want to rely on him getting that 80% chance stun. I goes for a sniper shot, gets a crit, it's enough damage. Yeah, it's enough damage. So maybe it was a mistake? Eh, I don't know. Now we get to stun this Crusader and we get to heal ourselves while he's still at low HP, so... The outcome was um, kind of good. The match that we won, the outcome was only that great because he failed that 80% chance of actually landing the stun on my Arbalest. So this uh, this feels like pretty much normal. So both Arbalists are at relatively low HP. I think mine is a bit lower, but it doesn't really matter because the sniper shot's going to drop either of them immediately. Yeah, now my opponent has a lot of options. He can uh, he can go for a finale. He has one finale buff, and he actually goes for the finale, and he does eight damage. Yeah, that, that feels bad, doesn't it? It's that five percent protection with one finale buff. He had nine to sixteen damage, but because of the five percent protection, he had eight to fifteen, and he rolls for eight, the exact minimum. He also doesn't get a crit. That just it feels really bad for him. Now I just go for a stun onto that uh, onto that Arbalest. He decides to heal, and now it's going to be very easy to to just get a death blow. We just uh, go for a bowler, and yeah, now he's screwed. He's going to try and pull my Arbalest, of course, but there's just so many things I can do right now. After he does something like that. Can't really heal her at this point, but uh, that's that's totally fine. I can stun his bounty hunter, and uh, we are just chilling essentially because of that abomination. So we can just uh, yeah, we go for the stun. I think 
which is an 85% chance to stun. Even against 50% stun resistance, the stun chance is just amazing. And 9 damage, 9 damage feels really good, doesn't it? Yeah, now he just uh, passes around because of that stun, and we just go ahead and get to finish him. What if he had gotten the finale? Well, this match would have been closer, but I still would have gotten the kill on that Arbalest. We would be at a 3v3 right now. But the thing is, I have two stunning characters, and he would have already expended his finale, so I would say that I am I would be firmly in the winning position, even more than I am now. Here I just decide to stun his Jester, to make sure that he couldn't go for any funny harvests, get like two bleeds, and just uh, overall have a bunch of fun. I just go for a nice finish and come on, also enough damage. Yeah, 28. Feels good, man. Feels good when a character is stunned and dazed. Feels real good. And now we can just uh, do whatever we want. We heal ourselves for 18, pretty much putting the nail in the coffin. Even if he hits us pretty hard right now, yeah, and it's GG. So round three goes for me. Kind of decisive, but I feel like if it was a if it were a closer match, I still would have won because uh, of the double stun. You trade a character, but you are two stuns up. I just have to believe that you're winning. So now it's round number four, and I am winning. I am winning two one. And he gets to go first once again, so first move, pull the Arbalest, right? Yeah, exactly. Always pull the Arbalest. Gets a crit. Pretty good. Makes his pulling chance 20% better, I think. I've actually never, like, hardcore proven that, but I'm pretty sure it's true. I know that a crit increases your stun, light, bleed, and debuff chance, but move? I am not sure. I'm not 100% sure. Because I have seen the crit uh, come hither actually fail to pull, where it would have been a 95% chance. So I am not sure. Yeah, now we just go back to doing the same thing. We stun the Arbalest first and hope for that 80% uh, chance miss, <laughs> because that, that would be really good, wouldn't it? What's he gonna go for? Oh, he doesn't want to miss, so he actually drops the Bulwark of Light. Interesting, he's gonna buff up his protection uh, a lot with that, because all our moves are just... Aside from the Arbalest, we can't really pierce protection, so it should be good, but not if we get crits like that. Yeah, now we can just drop that Arbalest to 0 HP, no problem. So, how is the first round feeling for me? Well, it's feeling pretty dang good, uh, because he didn't go for that stun. Would have going for the stun being better? Well, yeah, maybe, potentially. Potentially. I mean, he could have missed, right, and just instantly lost on the spot. But, yeah, potentially. Now here we remove, not the defender, but actually we remove the healer, which is this crusader. This is gonna make it much easier for us to get a death blow. I uh, pulls my obelisk, gets the pull, but it's okay, we'll be alright. We have a lot of, um, we have a lot of ways of still killing the Arbalest. The Abomination, we could just transform, go for whatever we want. Maybe even a, a Rage if we want to. Is that what we're gonna go for, actually? I'm not too sure, I feel like we're slamming the Crusader. Yeah, that's what I remembered. We slam the Crusader, we uh, disrupt both the Arbalest and the Crusader for this round, which feels pretty dang good. And I just have to believe that the combination between Caltrox and Bola is gonna drop the Obelisk to 0 HP in a position she doesn't want to be. So, yeah, that's not bad. Not to mention doing damage to the other characters, which always feels good. Yeah, he went for a Dirk Stab on my Abomination round 1, now he goes for another Dirk Stab. Rolls for 15, so I'm pretty much dead if he just finales. Like, that's not pretty good, actually. That's not so good. Now uh, we knock that Jester back a little bit. Yeah, that feels good. Uh, that Arbalest is uh, not doing so good. He's actually just gonna go for a finale, I think. Yeah. There's the finale now. He had two finale buffs, so he had like 12 to 22 damage. This round, you know, this match, he does get that finale. We just immediately go for a stun on that Arbalest, and I know that even if he goes for a, a rally to the flame right now, Ebola is just uh, gonna drop him and then the finish him will be good. But what he goes for here, he actually goes for a really good play. 
he decides not to heal immediately, which means that now I have a 25% chance of getting the death blow. And if I fail, which I likely will, but I don't, if I if I did fail, now he could heal and prevent the death blow from the finish him. However, his gamble did not pay off and I immediately got the 25% death blow chance. Which is uh, definitely a boon for me. Even if uh, his gamble had paid off a little bit, um, it still would have been pretty much a winning position for me. Also, Holy Lance feels really bad because I was just looking at the position and I was thinking, well, I'm doing good because his Crusader is quite low on HP. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, well, the Crusader HP difference isn't so big anymore because he just got a big, massive Holy Lance crit on us. 23 damage, isn't that insane? Would have been even more if we had... Uh, um, if we didn't have 15% protection on the Crusader. He just decides to go for a come hither. Doesn't want to let me get a sniper shot, because a sniper shot would really hurt him right now. Yeah, because he got the crit with the Crusader, he actually got an extra 15% protection, making him go up to 50. Kind of insane, you know. Uh, we'll be alright. Yeah, now he drops the Caltrops. Doesn't decide to pull me again. I don't know, maybe you should have pulled me again, but I guess my bounty hunter is already disrupted, so I suppose it wouldn't have been like the craziest play. There we get a crit with, with for 15 damage, bullet crit for 15 damage because he was marked and we still have to stabilize him till it to do a bit more damage. Kind of insane how much he can do. Now with the tank bola. So next round he's just gonna drop to 0 HP, so we kind of have a choice of who we want to kill, essentially. Yeah, now he just drops to zero and uh, he can do whatever he wants. The finish him is gonna kill that chest the next round. And his Crusader has less HP than ours. So, yeah, we are doing quite decent. Quite, quite decent right now. Now we just get a free kill onto his Crusader and... No, actually onto his Chester. After that kill, doesn't matter which character he acts with. Because once the Crusader acts, he's dropping to 0 HP. We are feeling very, very good. Because of the Cal drops, he's going to be dropping to 0 HP every two rounds. So yeah, that is perfectly fine for us. Question is, what do we do now? And the answer is, I'm probably going to use Rallying Flare, right? to just go for a stun on that Crusader, that just feels like the most dominant move in this, uh, at this point. Which he is likely to just try and prevent. Yeah, with a come hither, he's just gonna pull my Arbalest. But we, he doesn't get to pull, and now we just go for the stunning blow and we are chilling. We definitely do enough damage, and that Crusader is just dead. Because even if he tries to pull the Arbalest again, yeah, guess what happens if he tries to pull the Arbalest? You get two cookies if you understand what my next move will be, even if he pulls the Arbalest. See, there's a fifth move on your character. Just pull, just move back. The Arbalest can move back two positions. You can just do that. If you're up a character, don't be afraid to move to improve your position. It's just not bad. It's never bad. I just get a free death blow and yeah, my opponent doesn't have a chance of winning anymore and so he's gonna surrender. Yeah, GG. So that's match number four going for me, so we won three matches and lost one. Now we go to the final match, match number five. This is kind of like a, an honorary match because the best of five was already won when I won the last match. So yeah, now I actually finally go first. I think it's my first time going first. Insane, isn't it? Now, oh, in five matches, I only got to go first once, but I still managed to win three of those games. Yeah, we get to pull that Arbalest now. He's uh, going to respond with the pull again, so it's just more of the same, essentially. Kind of what you should expect when you're playing these matchups. Let's see, what do I go for now? The stun with the Manacles? Yeah, we go for the stun with the Manacles. Still a 90% chance to hit. Yeah, the Arbalest gets stunned. Now we can actually go for the stun onto our Arbalest with a 100% hit chance. So, he's gonna go for it. 
And look at that. 70% hit chance. Crit. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, he can't complain because the last matches we did, you know, the set of matches we did before this one, was pretty much the same thing. He would go for a sniper shot, a risky sniper shot on our character, on my characters, and just get a crit immediately. So, I'm giving him a taste of his own medicine, essentially. I go for a double stun on that Arborist with a 75% success chance. And we get the stun and we do just enough damage, even with her 5% protection. So that means that right now he has to heal with the Crusader. So yeah, healing with the Crusader, there he goes. Even after a heal with the Crusader, there's a sniper shot coming, there's a come hitter coming, there's, there's a lot of stuff incoming. Not to mention that next round he is very unlikely to be able to use his Crusader because I have two stunning characters, in case you forgot. Yeah, what's he gonna do now? Probably drop a Caltrops. Yeah, drops the Caltrops. Doesn't see like kind of a better move. Only my Arbalest there might have actually been worse for him because then I could even Holy Lance his uh, Arbalest if things didn't uh, work out well. So yeah, now Death Store. No kill. No kill actually. Who goes first? I go first anyway. I do go first anyway. He's just gonna move forward with a Dirk Stab, trying to focus on my Abomination again. That didn't work out too well for him last round. Nice. But he's seeing if he can make it work, and yeah, we get that 40% death low. And yeah. Yeah, he has two finale buffs, so he's dealing 12 to 22 damage. 12 to 22. Not great, not terrible. How much HP do we have? We have 15, and he doesn't roll for a now. And surrenders. So yeah, that's the power of the world domination team. It's just. It's just stronger than a hill compoise. It's decided. Four wins to one. Four wins to one. And in that one, he got a crit on my obelisk and I did a massive misplay. So yeah, if you had a question like, oh, which team's best? Is it the world domination or the hill comp? Well, the world domination freaking dominates everything, man. It's not a question at all. See you guys next time.